Everything we've done so far is called non-destructive editing, which means that we're only taking certain segments and we move the segments around, but we don't actually change the, the initial um, recording that we've got on our hard drive. If we go into the audio pool again, this is um, the drum loop, and here you can see all the different segments that we've got. We've got two of each, that's because we've got two, um, two parts, two drum loop parts. This is the ghost copy of that one, so whatever we did in this one, we'll find in that one as well. That's why we've got um, every segment used twice. But the original drum recording is still there, and if we play it, it's nice and slow at 88 BPM. That was the original tempo that we created the drum loop with. Now let's go into destructive editing and um, we've got a new tempo for the drum loop. Okay, this is the new tempo. And um, if we play this one with the bass, the bass is still on the old tempo, isn't it? So, so let's see whether we can time stretch this bass part here to match the new drum loop on 120. But because this would be a destructive editing process, I want to create a copy of the base, base recorded file on the hard drive first before I start to time stretch the base file. I'll do this in the audio pool, Control F again. Here's my, um, my base file. I go into the File drop-down menu and go for Duplicate File and give it a name. This is base. Let's call it the base, base um, copy. Graph. It's creating a file with a new picture and it's in the audio pool, but it's not yet in the arrangement window. In order to bring it into the arrangement window, I need to pick it up from the audio pool and drag it into my arrangement. Like this. I just move it into position and here's the file. Now, really, you've got two choices. You could either do the time stretch on our old file here or you can do the time stretch with this file there. Now let's take the long route and time stretch the bottom one. And, um, and as you can see, the bottom one doesn't quite match the alignment of the top one. And we can make this even clearer by going into the audio editor. Control E to open up both files. Let's change the view. And you can see, let's make it a bit larger. This is the new file, the um, base copy, and that one is the original. If we play the original, now where does this element here um, appear down there? Um, now I could just look, up, look for it, could be there. Yeah, that's because when I did the, when I chose which segment to keep of the bass part, I chose to keep the um, the second the second take that I recorded. But I want to show you a nice little trick of how you can create a segment of the bass for the bass copy, which matches the same segment as we've got up here. This one is segment bass one, and we need to match the segment bass one. Let's go into the audio pool for this reason. And then in the audio pool, there's um, our segment base one. And if we change the, the view so that we can see the samples, base one starts at sample 523,592. And it lasts all the way up until five, um, sample, what's this one? 1,046,262. 1, so let's do exactly the same the base copy. This is the segment that's being used in the arrangement window. And let's change the properties of this segment to match those figures that we've got up there. So I'm going to double click here and type in 523592. 523592. And you can see the starting point of the segment has already moved to match the starting point of that segment. And let's change the, the end, the end um, value. Let's double click here. We need to type in 
46,262. Let's press return. And the end segment, or the end point of the segment is exactly the same as for that segment up there. So let's press enter. And here's the, um, the new segment of the copy. And here's the original segment which we had in the first place. Now you might find it a little bit strange that the ends of these segments don't tie up with our bar numbers here. This one seems to be ending um, in bar 6, second beat, around the, well, it's down there, the 4th, 16th note and so on. This is because we're on tempo 120 now, whereas when we recorded the bass part we were on 88. So if I go back to 88, we've got a nice 4 bar loop here bar 1, bar 2, bar 3, bar 4. Now let's go back to 120. And what we want is this bass copy to, to play over 4 bars, but because it's playing on 88 it's a bit too slow, that's why it's um, reaching further. So I'm going to select the bass copy, I go into functions, audio functions, these here are the destructive edit functions that you've got. So whenever you do one of these processes here, the resulting audio file is going to be different from the original recorded file. So you have to be a little bit careful with what you do down here. You normally can't undo once you've done a few more other things in Cubase. So let's go to the time stretch. And now we've got the time, time stretch dialog. The source file is 120, destination file is 120. Now we know for sure that the destination is going to be 120 BPM. And we also know for sure that we started with 88. So I'll just double click, type in 88, and um, and now we can see the um, the um, the length of the original segment is 522,670 samples, and the destination segment is going to be a little bit shorter, only 383,291. And uh, you've got a factor here. We're going to reduce the length, and the factor is times 0.73. And you've got a little function here, you could make it um, more accurate in terms of the rhythm or more accurate in terms of the sound. In this case, we'll just keep it on zero. You've got three quality settings. If it's only a small area, always go with the best. If you've got a long, long, long recording then and you're in a, in a rush, then just go with fast. But usually just um, go with best. It's, that's the best, really. And let's go with it. It's creating a new file. Yeah, it's created a new file. Don't know whether you could actually see the the um, little windows come up, and here is our result. And yes, you can see it goes all the way up to um, to bar five there. And let's play it. This is the original, and this is the new one. Noticeably faster, isn't it? Okay, let's close this window. That one is the, the new file, so I could cut the part there, create another copy of it. I'll just press Control while I'm doing it. Let's go back again. Sometimes the Control button doesn't quite work. Yep, I've got an italic copy there. And we'll mute the original bass part, and we'll make sure that this one plays um, in the same channel as the original bass part did, just in case I, I had something set up in the EQ, for example which I didn't. You can see everything is, um, none of these are switched on, but um, that's usually the, what, what, what you do. And now we've got a faster tempo. And obviously the guitar part Another destructive function which is used a lot is, is called normalize. It's also up here, audio functions in normalize. And the normalize function will look at an event and look for the loudest part in the event, measure how far that loudest part is away from 0 dB, let's say it's minus 3 or minus 4 dB, and then calculate how much, how much gain needs to be applied to the event to make sure that the loudest part reaches 0 dB and um, and everything else of the part will then become louder. I'm going to um, solo this track, bring up the um, mixer, 
and measure just just for the time being and so we're on minus 5 dB okay so um I'll select the, the um, part go into functions go for audio functions select normalize let's say I want the level to go up to 0 dB this is standard but you can also just have like a lower setting by just left clicking with the mouse by the way you can't go higher than 0 dB because that'll be digital distortion so let's go with 0 dB it calculates the new elements and let's play it back and as you can see I get higher levels here and in theory one of them should be loud enough to actually get to actually hit 0 dB let's Maybe not. Maybe it's just too quick, the 0 dB, so that this meter here doesn't pick up on it. But we're very, very close. We can switch on the, um, the meters. And we've got little hold sections here, which is very close.